2007 is one of the most significant years in all of wrestling for one awful simple reason, Benoit killed his family and himself. Not only was the event itself an unspeakable tragedy, but it would have repercussions throughout wrestling that are still being felt 10 years later. In the immediate, it sent WWE into freefall with talk of concussions, steroids, and the general toll of the business attacking WWE publicly on all sides. In many ways, SummerSlam was not exactly WWE's highest priority, and it showed Chavo and Mysterio fought each other like the year before, Batista lost a world title match by DQ like the year before, and all the women were thrown together in a battle royal. It was just a different difficult time for WWE. I'm Plumpy from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 fascinating facts about SummerSlam 2007. Number 10. The cast of Jackass was supposed to wrestle Umaga. In June 2007, SummerSlam teasers aired on WWE programming, soundtracked by the upbeat theme music of the MTV series Jackass. That's because Johnny Knoxville, Steve-O and the rest of the Up For Anything masochists were supposed to take part at SummerSlam. Posters for the event depicted an angry Umaga alongside the Jackass cast who were buried up to their necks in sand. Umaga was supposed to take on several of the cast members in some sort of handicap hardcore melee, while Hornswoggle claims he was supposed to have a boxing match with Wee Man. However, the negativity of all Benoit-related media continued its malevolent swirl and Knoxville was actually the one who reportedly got cold feet about the match. Reportedly, once Knoxville backed out in late July, WWE scrapped the whole idea despite the availability of the rest of the cast. Number 9. McMahon nixed an Undertaker return WWE's main event scene in 2007 was repeatedly compromised by injuries to the point where it feels like Randy Orton was the only top guy that made it through the year unscathed. Even Taker, a man who's kayfabe dead, was not immune to this plague, tearing his biceps tendon in early May. If Undertaker had his way, he would have returned at SummerSlam, but it was Vince McMahon that put the kibosh on that. In the fallout of the Benoit tragedy, WWE was painted as a callous promotion that ran its performers into the ground. To reportedly send a message to other wrestlers that they didn't need to rush back early from injury, Vince held off on bringing Undertaker back at SummerSlam, though he did return to the ring at Unforgiven three weeks later. Number 8. Jeff Hardy was supposed to wrestle Umaga Oh, no one wanted to wrestle Umaga. The Samoan Bulldozer won the WWE Intercontinental Belt for the second time on July 2nd, 2007 and retained over Hardy in a lively match at the Great American Bash three weeks later. In the match at the Bash, the Jackass Boys were supposed to interfere, costing Umaga the belt before plans changed. Since that didn't happen, an Umaga-Hardy rematch was on the cards for SummerSlam. However, Hardy was sent home by the company before the taping of Raw on July 30th for an unspecified violation of company policy. His suspension was only 30 days and he won the IC title belt pretty much as soon as he got back. Back. Instead, Umaga wrestled a rather curious all-heel triple threat with Mr. Kennedy and Carlito. Number 7. MVP was diagnosed with a rare condition weeks before. MVP captured the United States Championship from Benoit at May's Judgment Day pay-per-view and toted the gold into SummerSlam. As had been the case with much of this list, grim reality tampered with creative. A couple of weeks before the show, MVP was diagnosed with Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, an abnormality that causes an accelerated heartbeat and palpitations. Though not usually fatal, the condition can increase the risk of heart attack. MVP, who whose condition was discovered through WWE's wellness policy, rare good news for their system at that time, says he had it corrected through a simple outpatient procedure. To take it easy on him for the next couple of months, MVP and Hardy did the partners who hate each other deal, working tag matches where Hardy did most of the heavy lifting. When not teaming up, the two engaged in bizarre challenges, including a beer drinking contest at SummerSlam that saw Steve Austin replace Hardy. Number six, Vince flipped out over Mysterio's costume. Rey Mysterio would often don special gear for big pay-per-views that would co opt the look of a hero or villain from a comic book movie. Outfits like like Daredevil, Captain America, and Heath Ledger's Joker have dotted Mysterio's cosplay resume, but his SummerSlam 2007 look rustled his boss's jimmies. In a recent shoot interview with Hornswoggle, he revealed when Mysterio showed up at SummerSlam paying homage to the Silver Surfer, the Rise of the Silver Surfer movie had just come out months prior, the McMahon screamed at Dean Malenko, the agent for Mysterio's match, not understanding what Mysterio was supposed to be. When told it was a superhero-based look, McMahon angrily said it was, quote, not Ray. And there you have it, another instance of pop culture savvy McMahon getting it. Number 5. It was Booker T's last WWE pay-per-view for three years. Triple H returned from a quad tear, polished off King Booker in under eight minutes, and got a put-on standing ovation from Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler. The spotlight was firmly on Hunter, but a different sort of attention would be paid to Booker days later. For reasons that will be explored more later in the list, Booker T was suspended for 60 days at the end of August, which he immediately protested. Upon hearing the news of his suspension, Booker and wife Charmel gave their notice to the company and walked out. The couple was officially released in mid-October, and both arrived in TNA at the Genesis pay-per-view the following month. Booker would not be seen in WWE again until the 2011 Royal Rumble. Number 4. WWE had no faith in Carly to have long matches. Hey, remember when the great Carly was world heavyweight champion because everyone else was hurt, and WWE 
WWE decided to try and cash in on his size before he was completely immobile. That reign led to a rather awful match at SummerSlam between he and Batista, where Carly got himself disqualified in under seven minutes. In house shows from earlier in the month, WWE was booking Batista versus Carly in matches that would only go a few minutes before Finley would run in for a DQ. Those matches would turn into handicap bouts, pitting Carly and Finley against Batista so that reliable Finley could shoulder the burden. In some instances on those shows, Kane or Rey Mysterio before his TV return would make the save for Batista turning the matches into tag team contests. Either way, WWE didn't want Carly doing, well, pretty much anything. So, you know, good to have you back, big guy. Number three, it was the first pay-per-view match between John Cena and Randy Orton. Between 2007 and 2014, John Cena and Randy Orton faced off in 22 different pay-per-view matches, not including Royal Rumbles. Ten of those 22 matches were straight up one-on-one -on -one encounters after taking part in the same fatal four-way at Backlash 2007 and then a five-way match at Vengeance Night of Champions, Cena and Orton had their first pay-per-view one-on-one match at SummerSlam 2007. Fun fact, across their ten singles matches that qualify for this list, they're five and five against each other. I smell a reunion, oh god! Number two, Orton and Batista were both originally booked to win. The 2007 edition of SummerSlam held four championship bouts and each champion retained their gold. Cena stood tall after vanquishing Orton and Carly, as mentioned, took the DQ loss to preserve his reign, kind of uneventful. Apparently, the plan as of the week before SummerSlam was to actually have both titles change hands. The call to keep the WWE Championship on Cena was made two days before the pay-per-view, making it a last-minute idea to have Cena become the first WWE Champion of one year plus since Randy Savage. Turns out both belts would change soon enough anyway. Batista got the World Heavyweight belt back from Carly at Unforgiven and Cena vacated the WWE Championship with a pectoral injury the first week of October. And number one, WWE suspended 10 of its wrestlers days later. Less than four days after the dust settled at SummerSlam 2007, the grim news came out that WWE was suspending 10 of its performers. The wrestlers in question were listed as clients of an online prescription firm called Signature Pharmacy, which was under intense post-Benoit scrutiny after after prescribing performance enhancers. 11 names showed up on that list, but only 10 were suspended. Edge, Charlie Haas, John Morrison, Umaga, William Regal, Chavo Guerrero, Booker T, Mr. Kennedy, Funaki, and Chris Masters. Booker, as we mentioned, gave his notice when he was informed he would be suspended. Morrison and Umaga dropped their ECW and Intercontinental belts after each retaining them at SummerSlam days earlier. The only one not to be suspended was Randy Orton, who not only continued his feud with Cena, but won the WWE Championship in October. This curious tidbit resurfaced in late May 2012, when Orton was suspended for his second violation of WWE's wellness policy, had Orton been suspended along with the aforementioned names in 2007, the 2012 fail would have been his third strike, which would have forced WWE to terminate him from the company. Marty Skrull, you will not be in our plans for championship title defenses anytime soon. It's not to say it will never happen for you, Marty, but you will need to prove that you are a prestigious contender once again. If I'm put in that match, I can really prove myself, man. I'm gonna give you the shot. I'm gonna put you in the match. This guy was always attacking me after my matches, Drake. Right. I want him added into the match. Oh, okay, yeah, I can do that. Add everybody. I'm gonna solve all the problems. Okay, okay that's fine, Jay. Jay, what's... Oh, that's prime eight now. Oh, now is not a good time. <laughs> okay, 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 what you want? What you want? Fine. Fine. You're in the ladder match, okay? Go get him. Yeah! Oh, Jesus Christ! 